Okay, so today we're going to continue with a three phase full wave or full bridge six pass arm control rectifier. Before this, we have three phase a half wave or half bridge three pass arm control rectifier. Uh, but now we're going to extend our analysis. Uh, we're going to study the circuits with a three phase full wave or full bridge six pass arm control rectifier. It is uh, called as uncontrolled because we use the diodes. And uh, six pulse in is uh, when we look at the output voltage later on. We're going to explain and we're going to get why this rectifier is known as six pulse rectifier compared to uh, half wave. Uh, it is also known as a three pulse rectifier. Okay, so to construct the three phase full wave bridge rectifier, we need another three diodes connected to the circuit. So for the half bridge, a full wave we only have d1 d3 and d5 whereby the cathode uh, the anode of the uh, diode 1 diode 3 diode 5 is connected to the supply voltage and now we add another three identical diodes on the bottom group we have d2 d4 d6 having said that uh, it is important and it is very very crucial that we follow the labeling of the arrangement of d1 d3 D5, D2, D4, D6 before we proceed. Right? So there is a reason why the diode labeling is always in certain terms of D1, D3, D5, D2, D4, D6. We have to look at later why this is uh, labeled as the. Right. So uh, if I can rearrange this circuit to the next circuit here. So I'm going to rearrange. So I'm going to rotate the top group here, D1, D3, D5, uh, 90 degree anti-clockwise or clockwise. We got D1, D3, D5. I'm going to rotate the bottom group here, again, 90 degree uh, anti-clockwise. Then I will get D2, D4, D6 in this arrangement. So if you refer to the top group here, this is very much similar to the midpoint converter, the three pass or the half wave rectifier. It very much pretty, uh, 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 follow similar or exactly the same as a midpoint converter, and the output of this uh, the bottom the top group here will be connected to the load R1 and then connect to the end point of the bottom group, and the cathode of the bottom group here will be connected to the supply voltage here, right? So before we go on the uh, discussing the circuit operations, let's have a look at the, the points, uh, the nodes that are very important in describing the circuit later on. So we have the neutral point, which is the neutral uh, or the common of the three phase supply here. And then we have the capital P to denote the output of the top group. And we have N, the capital N here to denote the bottom group uh, the voltage output or uh, the, uh, the point of the output bottom groups here with respect to we have an N small letter here is actually the neutral point here right so uh, for three pass rectifier before we have the rules uh, to identify which diet is on at any particular time we apply these rules is that it so we have the top group uh, for the top group here, the diode, which its anode with highest potential will come down. So it will follow these rules. And for the bottom group here, uh, we'll be following this rule whereby the diode, which its cathode with lowest potential come down. Right. So uh, once we understand the rules here, then we can simply identify which diodes will be on at any particular time, which diodes is on on the top, and which is diode that will be on at bottom group here. So we have a top group, and bottom group, P group, and N group here. And the output voltage is always parallel to the load. Right? Okay, so now let's look at uh, the supply voltage here. So we have V red, V yellow, and V blue of the out, 
uh, the supply voltage, the three phase phase supply voltage. Right. So now let's test our understanding. How can we apply these rules at any particular? So we start at this zero degree. Okay. Let's look at the top group here between D1, D3, D5. The diode, if we look at the uh, rules here, the diode with anode with highest potential will conduct. So if you refer to these three point, uh, three uh, voltages at this particular point, we're going to see that the diode, uh, the blue phase voltage is actually at its highest compared to red phase voltage and the yellow phase voltage. So that means during this zero degree, we have the blue phase voltage will be at its highest uh, potential. Therefore, you're going to see that D5 here will be on. So that's why in that region, you're going to have D5 on. Right? At the bottom group here, you're going to see that the yellow phase voltage is actually at its high, uh, lowest potential. So therefore, D6 yellow. To the diode that connect to the yellow phase on the bottom group, it's actually for the D6. All right, D6. Okay, so now as we um, start to move away from the zero degree here, right at that 30 degree, whereby we have the intersection between blue phase voltage and red phase voltage. Just across that, we got this now. The red voltage is highest, is the highest compared to the three voltages. Therefore, the diode will be changed or switch from D5 to D1. Okay, so diode one will start to uh, turn on from that intersection until we have this uh, diode yellow phase voltage. So, at uh, the bottom group here, uh, if you refer to that particular point, we still have D6 to be turned on. To continue to stay on because it is a high lowest potential. But when, when the uh, when you cross this uh, uh, intersection between the yet blue and yellow waveform, then we see the blue waveform has its highest or uh, lowest potential, and therefore it uh, changed to D2 here. Right, so if you uh, label all the diodes in this uh, waveform three phase supply, we're going to have D1, D3, D5, and then the bottom group we have D2, D4, D6, and that's why we have the the labeling of the diode is always D1, D3, D5, D2, D2, D4, D6, so that we're going to have a nice Arrangement. We're going to look at the diode, a commutation of diode from D1 to D2, D3, D4, D5, D6. So this is uh, how the diodes uh, uh, switch from one diode to another diode. So it is labeled so that in that waveform we have a nice, uh, we have a sequence, a correct sequence of diode operation. We have D1, switch to D2, then D3, D4, D5, D6. Right, so that is um, why we have a lab, uh, we, the labeling of the diodes. So it's D1, D5, D2. Okay, so now we are interested in looking at the output voltage because that is the ultimate objective whereby we need to look at this output voltage, the waveform of the output voltage. So to understand that, we go back to the three pulse midpoint converter, uh, whereby when, if you look at, refer to the circuits, so whenever D1 is on, the output voltage Vp here will always equals to the supply voltage V red. When D3 is on, the P voltage here will equals to the yellow phase voltage. And if D5 is on, it will follow exactly at the yellow phase, uh, blue phase voltages, right? With respect to that N neutral point. So the output of the voltage, if you refer to this point, the P and N, you're going to have the output of that from that P to N will follow the envelopes of the out, uh, the supply voltage, the 
uh, the positive envelopes of the supply voltage so that will be your vpn what about on the bottom row so if we if d2 is on then we're going to see that this point the end point here will be connected to the neutral point of the supply voltage and uh, sorry this end will be connected to if d2 is on you'll be connected to blue face and then if you have six this uh this six is on and will be connected to the yellow face and if d4 is on then you'll be connected to red face voltage right so therefore if you look at the waveform the v and n the voltage from that point to that point will follow the envelope of the negative phase voltage right so this is your vpn all right so that would be vpn here and this is going to be v and n the voltage from that point <coughs> to the v and n all right so that's the output voltage so now let's look at how we can get the output voltage because that is the ultimate objective to know or to look at to observe the output voltage waveform so to be able for you to understand to operate uh, to look at the output voltage we apply this kvl right because we know that between this point to n is vp uh, from the positive to neutral point we have vpn that will be plus and this will be minus and then for the bottom group here we have plus and n here v and n right? so if you look at the uh the polarity that will be plus negative we have plus negative and the output voltage vdc or vd here from that point to that point so if you apply the rules the kvl rule from the following that loop that loops okay then we have plus v and n minus vpn plus vd that is to get the output voltage so, so if you rearrange then the output voltage kvl equals to vpn minus v and n so if you come back to this uh, output voltage here, so where is the vdc you just simply subtract the vpn minus minus vnn because we have a negative value here so vpn so let's say we have this particular point vpn minus the negative voltage of vnn then it become vdc and this is actually the line to line voltages right so it will subtract the output voltage is the result of subtraction between vpn minus v and n yeah? so therefore you have this line to line voltage it will follow the envelope of the line to line voltage so if i if i can uh, draw or sketch the output line uh, the line to line voltage you can see that the vdc actually follow the envelope of the line to line voltages so uh if you count in one cycle this is one main cycle we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, and then that com uh, combined with that will be six. So there will be six bumps or six ripple or six pulse. And that's why this full bridge re re rectifier is also known as a six pulse rectifier. So, which means in one main cycle, you have six pulse of the output voltage. You have six bumps. So if you divide, uh by 360 degrees so one main cycle is 360 degree if you divide by six each re, uh, each pulse here will have 30 degree sorry 60 degree durations 60 times six rip uh, pulse will be equals to 360 degree okay so what about the input current so we know that uh, this is your output voltage
right? So this is the output voltage across the R. And if you look at the current of it, it just says simply VDC divided by R. So the output current also equals to the same uh, six pulse of waveform, uh, but it's scaled down by the factor of R1. So IDC equals to VDC divided by R1. So you will follow the same uh, waveforms here. Uh, that will be the output current. So output current is always continuous. Yeah? The output current is always continuous. So whenever D1 is on, the current ID will follow through ID1. Okay. Then it will choose where to go. Right. So uh, that's why you have an ID1 here. It's on. If you refer to IR, so IR is a combination of current through ID1 and also the current through ID4. Is it? It's going to Okay, so there's ID4 and also we have ID1. This should be ID4, sorry for that. Okay, so this is minus ID4. Okay, so whenever ID1, D1 is on, then IR equals to ID1. And whenever D4 is on, it will be equals to minus ID4. So that's why you have a negative current here right so that's all about the the voltage of the output voltage uh, of the three phase full wave bridge rectifier now we're going to look at the how to derive for the output voltage the average of the output voltage okay? the vdc how we're going to have this equation to describe the vdc the average of the output voltage equation for that we go back to the notes Notes. Okay, as we take one of the uh, pulse, we know that the duration of the pulse is always pi over three, which is sixty degree, right? And as I uh, as we did to the three pulse rectifier, we're going to rearrange, uh, modify the bit, the pulse, so that the peak of the output voltage is actually centered exactly at the zero here, and therefore your equations, the equation for the waveforms now change to cos theta and because this is following the line to line voltage we're going to have v peak line to line cos theta to describe the equation the instantaneous equation of the output voltage and and as for the uh, as for the limit or the angle we're going to have plus 30 degree minus 30 degree Therefore, the pulse duration is 60 degree. So you start with minus pi over 6 and it ends at pi over 6. Okay, so let's look at the, uh, the integration. So uh, each pulse is 60 degree. So we're going to get the average value of the DC voltage. So you have to do 1 over pi over 3, the duration of each pulse. And then your integration should be from minus pi over 6 until pi over 6, right? With respect to that uh, limit, eh? you're going to have minus pi over 6 to pi over 6. And the equation now becomes V peak line to line cos theta d theta. So I hope you can, uh, you can solve this. Eh? I hope you can, you can solve this. Uh, fill in the gaps between the integral and the output equations here. So uh the voltage the equation to describe the output voltage is always three over pi v peak line to line so if you are given in terms of phase voltage you need to change that to if you are given in terms of rms you have to change to the peak value and it has to be v peak line to line voltage okay right so now next, let's move on and focus on the uh, current, the input current, because we know that we need to uh, look at the THD, total harmonic distortions. We're going to also consider the 
uh, the power factor and so it is best for us to look at the total uh, the input current right so let's consider this circuit Okay, so let's move on from the purely resistive load to the IITC, to the highly inductive uh, R plus L, the inductive load. And in the case, we're going to look into the highly inductive load case, whereby the output current is ripple free. So therefore, in this simulation, we're going to replace the R plus L with a constant current IDC. And our target here, our objective here is to look at what the what will be the output, uh, the input current, the red phase input current. So let's try to simulate. <clears throat> okay, so let's just focus on the input current. I'm going to remove this. Delete screen. Okay. So this will be the output input current. Let's have a look at the output current as well. Put that together. So the blue waveform there is actually the output current. We know that it is a constant current. You see? So whenever D1 is on, so this is when D1 is on, and this is when D2 is, uh, sorry, D4 is on. Then we have this <coughs> sort of uh, input current. And it carries the output current of IDC and minus IDC. IDC and minus IDC. And so therefore, uh, if you look at the angle, if you refer to the first uh, slide here, so that would be uh when the voltage P vpn which is 30 degree and then we have 120 degree the pulse of the phase supply voltage so that would be 150 degree and then you have another 30 degree 30 degree so you have 60 degree here so that will be 210 degree and then you have further 120 degree so that point will be 330 degree and finally we have 360 degree. So now let's look at the this current. This is input current, red phase current. Of course, we need to uh, uh, identify what is the THG total harmonic distortion of this current. And this is known as a quasi square waveform compared to the square waveform that we had for the full wave rectifier uh, the single phase full wave rectifier we have a, a square waveform but now for the full wave three phase rectifier we have a quasi or quasi quasi square waveform this is like a square waveform but it's not really a square waveform so we're going to have we're going to look at uh, the Fourier series of the quasi square waveform so that we can obtain harmonics content uh, so that we'll be able to calculate what is the rms uh, of the fundamental component because the thd requires the i uh, the fundamental component the rms of the fundamental component and also the rms of the total uh, current okay so let's look at this note Okay, so just to recap, the revision on what is a Fourier series. Let me change that to spot. Uh, 
Okay, right. Some revision on the Fourier analysis. So we have this is uh, the series Fourier series equation. F of t is always a naught over two. Please refer to the uh, uh, notes before. A naught two is always the DC component, and then we have a n cos n omega t plus b n sine n omega t, and from that coefficients that leads to the cn sine n omega t plus p n. So what is the a n? You can follow this equation. This is a general equation for a n coefficient a n, and this is a general equation for b n. And finally, you have that cn. So this is just a revision. Uh, have a look on what is the uh, the fundamental equation for the Fourier series of Fourier, uh, while doing the Fourier analysis. And then this is how you can identify whether the waveform is uh, has any symmetry, even symmetry, odd symmetry, and half wave symmetry. Okay, so uh, because when the waveform has one of these symmetry or two of the symmetry, it will simplify the analysis uh, rather than we evaluate for the whole cycles for the whole 360 degree. Uh, if the waveform has any symmetry, it will, uh, you don't have to integrate. You have to evaluate for the whole cycles, probably you're going to evaluate up to half of the cycles or even to the quarter of the waveforms, right? And this is table 3.1 and with, this, with the conditions, uh, if the even symmetry, then you can see the what happens to the coefficient a and b n, right? So everything's in the notes here. So I can zoom here. So if you are even, then you can see that B n is always zero. What exists is only A n. But if the waveform is odd symmetry, all the coefficient A n coefficient will be equals to zero, but B n equals to that value. So and if you have an odd, you refer to that odd and quarter wave, A n is zero for all H. So no uh, coefficient a n is equals to zero for all h, but b n only exists for odd harmonics, and you only only integrate up to pi over two, which is ninety degree quarter of the wave, but b n is zero for even harmonics, right? So this is uh, just a revision recap on how the Fourier analysis. Let's move to the quasi square wave form. Right. So, if you look at refer to your uh, the input current, it is a quasi square wave form, and we have this uh, degree, thirty degree. And then you have the pulse is one hundred thirty degree. So therefore, you have the next angle here is one hundred fifty degree. There is a sixty degree apart. Therefore, that will be 210 and further 120 degree uh, durations. And then we have 330 degree, right? So uh, before we proceed, we need to look at the symmetry of the waveform. So if you refer to this quasi-square waveform, uh, it is by observation, I already write there, but it is a observation. The current waveform is odd and half-wave symmetry. Therefore, the waveform is also odd and quarter wave symmetry. So, if you refer back to the table 3 1 just now, a n is always zero for all n harmonics, and therefore that's including the DC average mean component, which is a naught over 2. That also equals to zero. B n is zero for even harmonics, so there is no, there will be no coefficient, no C n at zero at 2. 6, 8, 10. All the even harmonics will be 0. Bn is only at this for odd harmonics, which is 1, 3, 5, 7. And the possibility of n uh, for this quasi square waveform is uh, at 1, 3, 5, 7. All the odd harmonics. Now we're going to evaluate and look at the Fourier analysis to get the equation to describe the Fourier series equation to describe quasi square waveform. So we start with n, Bn will be evaluated for n odd and up to quarter of the wave, right? So therefore, since Bn, this is a general equation, 
bn is 2 over t 0 to t f of t sine n omega t dt now your bn becomes 2 over t over 4 because we only evaluate up to quarter of the wave because it is quarter and odd and quarter wave so you have 2 divided by 2 over 4 and you integrate from 0 to t over 4 Right, f of t sine and omega t dt, and then uh, it is confident to convert to radian. Therefore, t is changed to two pi. That's why you have two over two pi over four, and then your in uh, upper limit here becomes two pi over four, and then therefore finally you have b n equals to four over pi, and you have the integration from zero to pi over two f theta sine n theta for the quasi square waveform of the input current IAC. So Bn becomes four over pi, this is a general equation again, zero to pi over two, IAC theta sine and theta d theta. And now we look at the equations, uh, sorry, look at the waveform. This is your waveform. You only actually integrate from 30 degree to pi over two, because it's a square wave, uh, quasi square waveform, we only evaluate up to pi over two. So we start from 30 degree, which is pi over 6, and it ends at pi over 2, which is 90 degrees here. Right? So for that, it will become Bn 4 IDC over n pi, cos n pi over 6, so you replace that pi over 2, inside your, uh, here. And you have cos n pi over 6 minus cos n pi over 2. So since n exists only for odd values, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, because of the odd and quarter wave condition, and if we, if we substitute n with triplet numbers, 3, 9, 15, 21, and so on, we're going to see that the first component here, which is cos n pi over 6, will go to 0 for, all, for n triplet. And for the second component here, which is cos n pi over 2, will be zero for all and odd harmonics. Okay. These terms is always goes to zero, but for the first term here, it is only zero for triplet harmonics, three, nine, 15, 21. Therefore, if you list the number of harmonics, the Bn only exists for IDC over n pi, cos n pi over six, and you have to cancel out all the triplet harmonics, which is three, 9, 15, the next will be what? 15, uh, 21, and the rest. Okay, so it is a BN only exists for odd but no triplet harmonics. Right? So therefore, your CN, because we uh, our target is to get CN, is the amplitude, the magnitude of AN squared plus BN squared. Therefore, Put in the uh, amplitude, right? Absolute value, which is 4 IDC over n pi cos n pi is 6. Because we have to be careful for certain value of n, for example, 5, 7, 17, uh, cn is, uh, it will become negative value. But we know that cn is always positive because of that modular, okay? Of this uh, absolute value. So therefore, you have. Uh, for the angle, so it's a n over b n. So a n is zero since a n is zero, right? So the angle is zero. If you write the Fourier series, so you have a summation of n from one to infinity for I D C over n pi cos n pi over six sine n omega t. But there is no triplet. It is odd, but no triplet harmonic. So if you list down, it become one five seven eleven fifteen seventeen. And finally, the Fourier series equations is 4 IDC over pi cos pi over 6 sine omega t. And then the next amplitude will be 4 IDC for 5 pi cos 5 pi over 6 sine omega uh, 5 omega t. Next will be 4 IDC over 7 pi cos 7 pi over 6 sine 7 omega t and the rest. Right? So this is the Fourier series of the quasi square waveform. And if you want to look at the spectrum of that, 
you will see this spectrum harmonic spectrum of a quasi square wave form there will be a components that are fundamentals the fifth seven eleven and there is no triplet harmonic so if you refer to this there's no triplet harmonics here because it is zero right so now you can compare between uh, the characteristic of the quasi square wave form as well as the square wave form what is different between the two and you can try what will be the thd uh, and power factor of the quasi square wave form right i think uh, that's it for the uh, square wave form i'm going to continue with the uh, rectifier with the ls in the front end